and welcome to my channel. This is another time-lapse video, but a bit different from the last one. Feel free to let me know what you like best in the comments below. This time-lapse is one of my recent edits that took about two and a half hours in total. And I'm trying to go a bit more in-depth about what I'm doing in my editing process. So hopefully this might show you some things that you haven't seen before or might help you in your own workflow. If you see some things that you would like to know more about, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I'll try to answer any questions. The image that I'm working on today is an image I took when we were driving home from somewhere. I was trying to capture trucks in motion and to get a motion blur and sense of speed in the image straight out of camera. The image is taken from the passenger side window, looking back towards the truck that we were overtaking at the moment. But don't worry, I wasn't driving myself here. It was quite tough to capture a good and fairly sharp image as both uh, you and the truck are moving with a significant speed difference and the road surface causes a lot of vibrations when you try to hold a camera. I also don't have a gimbal or stabilizer to help me here. I'm just holding the camera in my hands. And the longer shutter speed needed for the motion blur doesn't help with the focus and sharpness either. The first thing I do in nearly every larger edit is taking the image into Photoshop and start creating paths with the pen tool. It's quite a tedious process, but it's very important to do it right, as all the following layers and selections are based on these paths. And that's also why I try to get it as close to the edges of the truck or object that I'm tracing as possible. And with some motion blur and pass it get out of focus, um, this can be harder to see and do right. I try to place the line on the hardest color change in that color shift between the two areas. As you can also see with the wheels on this truck. This is also one of the steps that can take a while, especially if you want to do it right and if you want to part out several parts of the image, this also adds up quite fast. But it's probably worth it in the end, as it will provide you with a lot of flexibility in your editing workflow. And for example, if you want to make a selection of one of the paths that you path it out, then you can easily reselect that and edit that item over and over again. And just as an extra step, if it's not my vehicle or if I was unable to ask permission of the owner of the vehicle to publish images about it, um, which is the case for this image, then I would like to change the license plate to something fictional. And this makes it impossible to link that image directly to the driver or for other people to be able to look it up in some registry when they see my image. And the next step is to create a cleanup layer. This is the layer on which I will do my main corrections. Just to clean up the image, take out imperfections and do some spot and reflection fixes. For this layer to work for me, I have to make sure the box is checked for sampling all layers. Otherwise it won't see the layers and the data below. It will just provide you with an error that there's no information on the layer itself. And for this image I want to go for a clean look. Something that's good, that you could use in a commercial for example. 
and this of course is also dependent on the client or who you are taking the image for if they for example need an image that's as true to life as possible you don't just start taking off markers and stickers without permission as i'm doing here on the truck trailer as you might not know the value the representation or the meaning behind those items as they are not there for nothing probably um the main tools i use for these actions and steps i use um are the clone tool the spot healing brush and the patch tool and i just use a mix of those and i might use one or another if one of them doesn't work out as i want it to it's just yeah playing around a bit seeing what works best for that occasion or that item you are working on i also created a new layer here just for the sky so it won't affect any previous work that I did on the truck or in the cleanup layer. I like to use the polygonal lasso tool to make some quick selections. As you can see here where I use the truck path to make a selection of the truck. And I then extend it with the polygonal lasso tool to create a selection of the sky only. When I had that selection, I was able to create a new path from that selection on the path tab, just for the sky. Now I'm going to create a new layer to add extra blur to the truck, gradually increasing from the back to the front. I create a new layer for this with a selection of the truck path and I apply a path blur effect. This is a blur that follows the path that you set, which makes the effects more realistic. You can apply the proper perspective to the blur effect, uh, which really gives it that sense of direction and speed. I reselected the truck and created a mask that only shows the truck. And then with a black to white gradient applied to the mask, I let the blur effect gradually fade in. And with the gradient, I can choose where I want it to start and how gradually the mask should be applied or the effect in this case. And what you can also see me do now and probably in some other places in the video is using the polygonal lasso tool just to create some quick selections to work within. For example, in the passenger window, just to make sure that I don't hit the edges of the window or the dashboard with the clone tool. Or as you can see on the dashboard, when I'm cleaning up some stuff, just to blend in brush strokes without going over the edges of the dashboard or the windscreen wipers. For the rest of the truck cabin, I just like to clean it up as much as possible. Which also makes me want to remove any personal things in this case. Just so it can be related to a specific person. The main goal is just to make it look as clean and with as little distractions as possible. If I, for example, would leave a dash cam hanging in the middle of the windscreen, this would probably draw your attention straight to it when you see the image for the first time. And I want to avoid these things. As with a lot of vehicles, they have a lot of reflective surfaces. And on a cloudy day with some sun peeking through like we have here, this can make an image look very busy very quickly. When it's not too much of a hassle, I try to clean up some of those reflections um, just by brushing in, spot healing and cloning some spots where the clouds break in the reflections, for example. This is just to make them look more uniform, uh, larger or more appealing, I think. Or yeah, less busy might be a better description.
And you can also see me using a dodge and burn layer here. This is an overlay layer with a gray fill. And you can then use this layer to dodge and burn over the whole image using a white or black brush. I use this layer to really accentuate the highlights and the shadows. And this really makes the overall appearance of the image stronger, I think. And here you can see me clean up some more of the reflections. Just using the polygonal lasso tool to make a boundary. Temporal the color just near that boundary and then brush in some of that color with the brush tool. This way you can sample several colors and blend them to follow the reflections and the lines of the body panels of the vehicle you're working on. Some of the techniques that you see me using here, I also just picked up on different YouTube channels uh, from several accounts that I follow, just like Damien Plisko and Mo Sainal. Um, they both have awesome channels and you should really check out their channels if you're interested in car photography. They have amazing content and I will leave a link to their channels on the end screen. Here for the final steps in Photoshop, I just add a color filter with a splash of blue coming from the back of the truck just to make it more interesting and tie the blue sky and the road surface a bit more together. Where there was first was a hard white truck trailer separating them. They now have a shared blue fade over them, tying them more together. As a final step, I would like to take the image into Lightroom for my editing workflow. Just to finish it off with some final details, a bit of color correction, some dredging and burning. Adding some radial filters and graduated filters. And just to accentuate and highlight some important details even more. Make the colors pop and really dull in the focus on the subject of your image. And that was it for this video. Uh, you can see a short before and after animation here. I'm very happy with how the image came out. Um, let me know what you think about this video and this setup with the time lapse and the voiceover. If you have any questions, tips, tricks or other techniques, just let me know in the comments below. I like to learn new things as well as teach others new things. Um, subscribe if you want to see more. I'm planning on creating more videos soon. For now, thank you for watching and have a nice day.